Hi and welcome to another episode on this channel. Uh, this short little video will just try to explain you quickly how to mount all your accessories onto your existing wing and backplate. Uh, backup lights, lights, dry suit inflation, knives, all that sort of stuff. We go over it, why it's there and how we use it. So um, let's start with dry suit inflation. A tiny little tank like this, this is an aluminium cylinder, 0.85 liters. Um, you can also get them in a similar size in steel, so one liter tank in steel. Those we can mount on these uh, straps that are made for it. If you need to use a bigger cylinder for your dry suit inflation, you mount them on the side of your tanks uh, with straps that are made for that. In this case, we'll stick to this one. Alright, so when you mount your Argon bottle or your dry suit inflation bottle, be aware that the valve is pointing slightly away from you because as you can see now the wing is fully inflated, it'll push that cylinder towards you. So when you angle this with a too sharp an angle towards your body, the first stage is starting to dig into your, into your hip which is uncomfortable. So make sure that the valve is pointing straight out or a little bit to the left. The height of this is so that the bottom of the cylinder, the valve, just sticks below the back plate. Uh, that way you can easily reach it to turn it on and off. And it's kept in place by that little bungee that just routes. It's kept in, and it's kept in place by that little bungee that just routes over the valve head underneath the first stage, like that. Now we add the first stage. Can be any other first stage simple thin little first stage if you use a generic one make sure there's an overpressure release valve and a short inflator hose that hose gets routed underneath your hip strap so it doesn't interfere with your d-ring and it goes straight onto your dry suit so so much for the dry suit all right next up is uh, our cutting device or our knife it goes on our hip uh, harness and it needs to be reachable with both left and right hand so this is a good placement for it because that's easily uh, reachable with both hands uh, it can be a little knife or this little um, line cutter from Trilobite it's called the Easy Cut and I think it's uh, nice because uh, it's super sharp it's basically a razor blade captured in this angled plastic it goes through everything line, fishing net, webbing, everything so I like those very much um, and you just place it right over there. All right, now we're on the left side of our hip. We can also look at this tiny little half D-ring. Um, it's something we learned from side mount diving. It's an extra D-ring on the left side that gives you the ability to move your tank down uh, a little bit to keep the bottom part of your tank from sticking too far up. Keeps you more streamlined and it keeps you from uh, hitting the roof of the cave or a wreck or whatever. So it's a nice addition. All right, moving on to the lights, primary lights and backup lights. Um, if you have one backup light like this one, it goes on the right chest D-ring. Now, if you've done some UTD training, you've learned that right is primary, left is backup. So why do you say do we put our backup light on our right chest D-ring? Well, it, there, it, mount, it mounted there, it actually gives us a dual purpose because A, it keeps the D-ring down and the reason we have it on the harness instead of in a pocket for example is that when these lights turn on accidentally your team can see the light shining and tell you to turn it off or turn it off for you so outside is uh, is a good thing the reason it keeps it's good to keep the D-ring down is that makes it easier for you to clip off your long hose because it it stiffens up that D-ring it makes it a bit easier you just place it there I clip mine clipping it down so the gate is uh, protected and just put one of these bungees over the head that keeps it from dangling nice and easy moving on to primary lights most of us still use a canister type primary light and that's mainly because the battery capacity 
of the light needs to be enough that it produces a strong light for a long time. Now with the invent of LED and all that sort of extra technology, you can see handheld lights that have almost the same power and the same burn time as these big, almost old fashioned um, canister lights. But if you use a canister light, it needs to be mounted on the right side of your hip harness together with any batteries you might use for uh, a dry suit or an undersuit heating system, for example. So what you do is you just route your webbing through that strap and then you can use a extra tank strap or sorry, an extra weight belt buckle to keep it in place. In this case I'll move it a bit further away so it doesn't topple the whole system on this table but normally you would just go as close to the back plate as is comfortable. Again keeping in mind that when you inflate the wing it pushes this canister forward. Just locking it in place. I've made another video on how we set up this double ender system so check that out I'll put a link in the description but basically now we can add this to our uh, to our harness here as well. I always make it a point to uh, keep the hoses aligned in the same orientation. So that means if I have my D-ring in front of me, on the outside, clipped from the downside up, is my long hose. On the middle is the backup light, and on on the inside, I keep my primary light. Because that way, I always know which is which. And when you think about it, it's logical. You use your right hand to reach for your long hose and you, you use your left hand to come on, uh, across your chest to reach for your primary light when it's time to take that one on. So that way both of them are right where they need to be. If you use a canister for your dry suit you can also mount that here depending on the configuration how long they are, how easily they are to use with the pockets and stuff. You can either mount them on the inside, which I prefer, then it goes straight from the inside battery to your dry suit uh, connector to your heating system. So that goes on there. Finally, you can opt to have uh, a, a pouch system here that actually gives you a little bit of storage space if you need that, or it's a padded protection if that's necessary, uh, and these mount to these extra holes in the back plate. When you do use them, uh, make sure you don't bolt the bottom part to, to the back plate also because that hinders you a little bit of tightening up or loosening this um, wing nut. So leave the bottom part of that protecting pad or pouch uh, open or loose. That way you can just flip it over and access this one. The top one is easily re reachable because the, it almost hardly covers that top uh, bolt. So that's easy. When it comes to other accessories like uh, weights and other stuff like that, you can mount them either as a tail weight that's underneath here, a B weight that sits in between these bolts here, and other systems. You can have harness uh, mounted weight system like a pouch on the side here. There are many different options um, to, to add weights to your system. Another uh, accessory I sometimes use on longer dives is a little camelback that actually sits here in the recess of this back plate and it bolts to the top and the bottom uh, bolt of your twin set. And the hose comes over your shoulder and gives you something to drink on long uh, duration dives, which is very, very nice and well done. So that's how you set it up. Let's jump in the water and go for a dive. All right, so when you're at the dive site and you've got a nice little bench like this to get kitted on, that's actually very, very nice because then you can just stand in front of it and put it on. This can also be a bench or the back of your car or whatever. So let's first show, by, show you by how to um, do it when you have ideal conditions. When your valves are on and everything is in the right order, I like to place the right uh, shoulder strap up and behind the, um, the back plate. So it, it's less likely to fall in front and catch on your back. So you put that there and that's out of the way. Make sure everything stays 
as far away as possible. Then, before you stick your arm in, in this case my dry suit inflation comes from a little argon bottle, so it goes underneath that strip and onto my dry suit. If it were to come from the right or left post, it would go underneath and through the webbing here onto your uh, inflator. So in this case, I'm in front of it. I can just connect it, and it's much easier to check if everything is in working order. That's working. Now you can just stick your arm in. Make sure you have your valve all the way here and you move as far to the left as you possibly can. Now you can see you can reach this strap. If you somehow dislodged it or it fell behind you, always remember your long hose is attached to the D-ring so you can just simply pull on the long hose and it pulls up your webbing. Keep it up with your finger and then stick your arm in all the while keeping yourself reasonably low if you can see my head is almost at the top of the back plate that gives me a lot more place to work with if I'm too upright this is too tight so here everything is there now I'm go ahead and close up the hip strap taking care I don't lock my long hose or any other hoses in place underneath it And again, remember this will be cut to length. For now, we'll leave it as is. Then I'll start by making sure my necklace is on myself first. And then I can take the long hose. Now you can unclip it and route it along. But if you can see, the hose is already in the same orientation as it should be. So I can simply take this hose place it behind my neck, create a little loop and stick it in the belt or if you prefer loop it underneath your light canister right here up to you. Now I'd like to take my uh, hose or the cable of my light and go underneath the long hose and then the belt. That way everything keeps nice and tight. Nothing hangs and dangles. All right, then it's just a question of finishing off by doing all your checks, putting on your hood, and go for a dive. And that's where we're gonna go down now. When we come back from the dive, I'll show you how to get out of the set when you're on the surface beside a little boat or a little dinghy or whatever. But first, let's go for a dive. All right, that was nice. Short dive, but very good. So let's say you come back up and as you can see, there's a little bit of current right now. But uh, that's very common, especially when you dive off a boat. So when you come up, you start by making sure that you don't drift away. Many people have the tendency to try to stay upright as much as possible. But as you can see, then I can not fight the current and I will drift away from the boat. So put yourself on your back. A little gas in your wing, a little gas in your dry suit, and then it's much easier to slowly kick against the current and you stay beside the boat. First of all, we need to take all the hoses away. So, long hose away. Necklace away. Dry suit away. Now I'm clean in front. The trick here is to stay on your back, because as soon as I undo the, ba the waist belt, my wing wants to float up, and if I'm laying on top of my wing, that's no problem. But if I'm upside, uh, right side up, the wing starts to float up, and it locks me in place. So right now, everything is open. And I'm, can, I can still fight the current, and I can still stay in place beside the boat. Now what I do, is I make sure I pull the right side of my webbing completely tight 
by pulling the left side up. And now I can stick my right, my left hand in that webbing and get it out. Then, while keeping hold of the right side, I can move out of it. Now I can make sure I can clean it up. Keep all the hoses in front. And reach it up to the boat guy. So, that concludes this little video on how to set up your harness and how to use it. Um, have fun trying it out there. And remember, it's only a like 90% adjustment because I figured out that my crotch strap can be a little bit longer and maybe the belt, the weight belt can be a little bit tighter. But that's small adjustments you make after the first couple of dives. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to set up your DIR harness and how to use it. And that I showed you that it's still reasonably easy to get out of, even though it's a non-adjustable harness. Um, Make sure to like and subscribe to this video and uh, stay tuned for more episodes. Stay safe guys, see you out there.